In the Still Life series, I worked with digital data. What I'm going to do here is to deconstruct the sine wave. I'm going to use a piece of software to create a sine wave. I'm going to create just a two second sine wave and save it a wave file so we can work on it later on. So I've created my sound file and they're going to use another piece of software to look at the file and we can first of all open and we can listen to it and that's a pure tone of a sine wave we can't see much detail but if we zoom in we can start to see the sine wave the sine waves if we move a little bit further we can now see an actual sine wave and we can see it's made of steps each of these steps represents a sample and in the case of audio CDs and, and this WAV file, it's taking 44,100 samples a second. So each of these is that fraction of a second. Now what I can do is save this and I can save it in various formats. But the format I want to work with is I want to actually see the actual data in the file as text. So I'm going to save it as numerical text and I'm going to save it as uh, ASCII integer, it's a number, numbers, mono and I'm going to call it MON OK so we should have our input text file there so now I have my input file, text file, and we can open that with the text editor. This heading here is just for the um, sample player, the editing software tells it that the sample rate and um, it's a mono file and this data is, each of these is, is a sample um, of the sound and we can run through them, see how they change and that's just what it is, it's numbers. So if we just grab a chunk of these and I'll save these as a new file called X. Right now, here's my file called X and what I just want to do with this is to open it but I want to open it with um, Excel, it's a spreadsheet program Use, most people know what these do but they process numbers so I'll just open it with Excel so I'll just see the numbers again and here they are in this column um, so there's nothing special about that um, other than if we can now highlight these numbers and what we can do now is we can just use Excel to sort of show that there's nothing magic in the representation we saw in the software uh, the, the audio software if we just say let's plot this as a graph as a line graph then here we see the plotting of the numbers produces yet again a sine wave shape. So all that's happening is in sampling is we're using these numbers um, to generate this shape. In this case it's a sine wave. If it was speech or a song then it wouldn't be a smooth sine wave, it would be more complicated but it's exactly the same thing. So that's just to show you that there's nothing special about the software that we've used. Um, the audio software, um, how it treats the numbers, it treats the numbers just as we can treat them in, in Excel and the numbers, if we look at them, plot them on a graph, we get the shape of the wave and that's how PCM 
how sampling works. There's one. No, we don't have to say that particularly. There's one thing we can notice. We saw a couple of sine waves in our Excel spreadsheet just, and we've got a 51k. Um, the actual file we created, which is two seconds of sound, um, when it looks in text format, is um, 714 or 700, 714,000 bytes. What does that mean? Well, each one of these digits is a is a byte. That's a byte, and that, and that, and that. So that's why the file is is huge. Um, and as I said, this is only two seconds worth of sound. Okay, we don't need this little file anymore, so we can just um, delete it. Um, it's the input file in that we now want to have another look at. As I said then, each one of these numbers is a sample. And our idea of deconstruction is very simple. We want to isolate these samples so that we can hear them individually. And how we're going to isolate them is we're going to insert zeros between each one. Hello. And in this case we can take zero to be nothing. And so we start to move the samples away from each other. Now in the first instance we're just going to use a single one but later on we'll, see, we'll separate them from each other more and more and the more we want to separate them the more zeros we need to put in here okay now the, the, the task of doing this manually with all these samples would just take forever well, at least not forever, it would be a fairly arduous task. So, rather than do it that way, I can just get rid of my persons. Rather than do it that way, we can use a computer program to for us. Um, I'm going to remove the header because we don't want to um, you, we don't need that, and rather, we don't want to put zeros. There. So we can get rid of this line. That's right. So now if we just save that, we can now look at something that will make our job of deconstructing our sine wave a lot simpler. So we're going to use a computer program, and this one happens to be um, written in Visual Basic, um, quite an old programming language now, but it's a, it's nice and simple um, for our needs. So we'll just open up the programming language, in this Visual Basic, and we've got a program, um, and this is the program, it's not a huge program. Um, it's got a very simple input screen. I've we'll just put a button on there. We, we press the button. Um, it's not particularly pretty um, front end, as they say, but it'll do. And when we press the button, um, it's not necessary you understand how this works particularly, but basically what we can do here is we can add zeros. It's going to read, it's going to open our input file, which it does here. Okay. and it's going to read the input file and write the data out and then it's going to write a zero in this case it would have written 10 but I just want to write one so as I said don't worry too much if you don't follow what's happening here let's just see what happens when we run the program so we run the program um, we'll start the program off here's our button we'll press the button and that's it um, so all we need to do now is to have a look see just what we've created 